So there are four gospel writers. They've got different points of view. It's just like if Natalie, Mira, Ben, and I all decided to preach the same text, we'd be wrestling with the same material, but we would put emphasis on what mattered most to us, thinking about our own story, because preaching is truth through personality, but also the intended audience, right? So Matthew is very much precise, tell the story exactly as I think it's meant to be told, like a legalist in a way, not um, as in judgmental, but as in precise and clear. And so when you hear this version of the story, it might have caught your ears that Jesus was on two donkeys. And you were thinking to yourself, really? How Indiana Jones was that is what you might have been thinking. I don't know. But actually, Matthew's trying to track on to stick with this prophet Isaiah story, right? Look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey on a colt, full of a pack animal. Sounds like two things, maybe three things. But it's one, right? It's one donkey, one um, colt, one um, farm animal that is in Bethpage where Jesus sends his disciples to get it. All of this, maybe because Jesus is dramatic uh, preacher himself. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to pick on I love that. But he's like making an ethical spectacle. He, he knows what time it is. He knows that he's done his duty. He knows. It's been, it's been a tough and beautiful uh, three years of ministry, but it's coming to an end, and he knows. He knows. When he goes to Jerusalem, he's going to face the conflict that's at work in the empire. He knows. It's going to be a battle between the kingdom of Caesar and the reign of God. He knows that there's a clash of values between truth-telling and lying, between sharing resources and hoarding them, between lording it over people or collaborating with people. He knows what time it is. So I think Jesus is like, since we're going to do this, let's do it the way the scriptures say it. And he makes a choice to not walk into town, but to ride into town on a donkey, not on a horse, not in a chariot, but on a donkey, because this is a different kind of kingdom. And this, Matthew is saying, is a different kind of king. A king whose entry into the city is conspicuously humble. A king whose reign is ruled with love, not might. Love, not lies. Love, not violence, love, not AR-15s, love, not laws meant to disparage, love, not mass shootings, love, not insurrections. Although, it could be said, and it was said, that this movement, this of the people, this earthy, this Everybody's welcome just as you are as you come to the field or mount of olives that this revolutionary love felt to Rome like insurrection. Felt to Rome like sassiness, right? Felt to Rome like back talk. Felt to Rome like how dare you, Ness. Felt to Rome like stay in your place, stick with your kind. That's why... That's why the conflict ensued. That's why the violence ensued. That's why Jesus was killed. Conflict is wherever two or more ideas exist. On the one hand, your life doesn't matter. On the other hand, black lives matter. Trans lives matter, women's lives matter, undocumented folks' lives matter, immigrant lives matter, Asian lives matter, Latinx lives matter, children's lives matter, old folks' lives matter, poor folks' lives matter. On the one hand, status quo, worshipped, elevated, codified, coins, coins printed in the name of Caesar, in the name of God. On the other hand, 
a relationship with the holy other who has always shown up for the outsider, always shown up for the dispossessed, always centered the ones who no one else would center, always, always flipped the tables, always, always put the outsider in the last first. These are the circumstances in which Jesus rides into Jerusalem. We celebrate today the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem because we're celebrating that there's a kingdom that has no end. We're celebrating that there is a kingdom in which you and I count. We're celebrating that God crashed into human history with love so amazing, so divine, in particular flesh, African Semitic brown outsider rabbi itinerant refugee baby flesh to teach the world what love looks like. We celebrate this triumphant entry because we know that God was on the move to change the way we think about life and love and each other. But we celebrate understanding the circumstances. We celebrate understanding the power of empire because God knows empire is powerful. We celebrate understanding that this week is a week in which Jesus encounters betrayal, torture, and death. And we celebrate because we understand Jesus is God. Jesus is Papa, Mama, Parent, does not allow those circumstances to have the last word. The circumstances surrounding these palms is that weeping will last for a night, but joy will come in the morning. The circumstances surrounding these palms is that our hearts are cracked wide open, appropriately so, with the grief we feel at a world gone crazy with hatred and violence, with despair. We understand these circumstances that though we are devastated and destroyed, though our faith is shaken, though our confidence is wobbly, God's not, God's not wobbly. God's not shaken, and God's not absent. God is present in the sign Kelly's carrying about the poor people's campaign. God is present in the love that the butterfly folks are going to give out in the streets today. God is present in the therapy that is offered by Pam. God is present in the teaching that is offered by our teachers. God is present in the singing, in the praying. God is present in our activism. God is present in our love. Which is to say, our suffering is time constrained. Because it is a fact that God will use every single one of us to make the reign of God dawn fully on earth. Every single one of us has a job to do, a role to play in this drama, the drama that does not begin on Palm Sunday, the drama that begins at the dawn of human history, the drama called God will make a way out of no way, the drama called love wins all the time, every time, and maybe three times on Sunday. The drama called God has got us and we have to have each other because that's how it seems God does God's best work is through us. There are some people who are saying things like Trump is going to come to the city on Tuesday and when he comes it's kind of sort of like Jesus riding into Jerusalem. One doesn't even want to say it out loud, it's so laughable. But let's be crystal clear. Trump is not Jesus.
lying, cheating, stealing, genitalia grabbing, porn star poking, Just to say, those are not the qualifications of Jesus. We all make mistakes. Our job, our job, our calling is to be like Christ, to be Christ-like, to be a part of the absolute universe-bending, world-altering, life-transforming plan, boule of God to no less than heal our hearts and heal the world. That's our job. So we can raise our palms and we can shake our fists, try to stay out of the city protests. It's not going to be safe. But understand, you are the living body of Christ. You are the living body of Christ. You are the living body of Christ. And the circumstances surrounding this moment are you've got the stuff God needs to do the work God intends. Don't forget it. May it be so.